I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Can you use scraps in your quilt binding? Of course you can, but if you're not paying attention, they can trip you up. In this binding tutorial, I'll show you four ways to use up your scraps to add that extra design touch, save you money, and keep Mount Scrapmore under control. And stay to the end for my fastest, easiest scrap binding method. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I already have a video series on how to bind your quilt. In part one, I showed you the basics, how to calculate how much binding you need, how to attach it to your quilt, and how to get a nice crisp corner with my three-in-one tool hack. In part two, I showed you how to experiment with different binding widths. And in part three, I showed you three different ways to machine bind. I also have made a whole series on fabric scraps, big and small, to help you develop strategies to consume scraps so that they don't overflow into your sewing space. Today's video is going to combine those two series together with scrappy binding. Before you start, you want to take a good look at your quilt top. Scrappy binding can add a punch of color, you can use it to direct your eye, or echo a theme, or just add some surprise and fun. But not every quilt top needs this. For example, this quilt top is a good candidate for scrappy binding as it has a strong border which separates it from its busy center. But this pink quilt is not. It's already very busy and has this dynamic center motif. A scrappy border would be a distraction. You have invested so much time in making your quilt. Do what's best for your project. If you feel like it's a good idea, pull out your leftover scraps. Taking your scraps from your current project is the easiest, as you know that the color and theme matches your quilt. How much do you have? You might or might not have enough to make a whole binding from scraps. And what are their values? A black and white photo can quickly tell the story. The more they contrast, the more they will draw the eye. What sizes are your scraps? Eliminate any that are too small. Will the patterns in the fabric work in binding? Fold them against the edge of your quilt top. So now knowing what scraps you have, here are some scrappy binding options. This is when the whole binding is made from scrap pieces from a roughly similar value range. You might see contrasting color, but no scrap really pops out from the others. You don't need to use just scraps from your current project. You can dig through your scrap bin and pull out anything that works. It's only a small profile of the fabric that shows, so always fold it to the right size to check. You might be surprised at what works and what doesn't. Your scrap pieces don't need to be the same size, but they do need to be the same width. I am making my binding just the standard two and a half inches. You can make a repeating pattern or have them totally random and just sew them together in one long strip. In regular binding, we join the strips with a 45 degree seam to reduce bulk. But your pieces may be too small for this and you might just want to do a straight seam, which is perfectly fine. Just shorten your stitch a bit, press the seams open and be consistent through all the scraps that you use in the binding. With all the binding, the one thing that you want to avoid is bulk in the corners. However, the more pieces in your binding, the trickier this will be. You can measure, and as you make your binding, just know where the longer strips will be needed, or before you sew, just lay out your whole binding on your quilt and adjust until it works. Now, before you sew, give your binding one last look. It's better to adjust it now than rip it out and sew it again. If this is your first quilt or you've never been shown how to do binding before, you will be looking for information on how to sew your binding to your quilt, make sharp corners with my three-in-one tool, and join your strips together. And all of that information is included in part one of this series, Binding the Basics. I'll leave a link to that video here and in the notes below.
I am also using my sewing machine to finish my binding. And you can find this technique in part three. This is a nice, fun finish. This is a very similar technique to the last one, but this time we are alternating scrap strips of different values. And this adds a lot of energy to the design. The pattern can be a simple repeat of light and dark, but depending on what scraps you have, you may want to play with your pattern and try something like light, medium, dark. This version takes a little bit more planning as you need a fairly consistent piece size. I prefer my seams to be on the 45, but they can be straight if needs be. Again, you need to avoid the bulk in the corners. So adjust the piece on the corner to be long enough to wrap around. And you want to plan the beginning and the ending of your binding so that your final piece is neither too large or too small. A wash is the gradual change of either color, value, or saturation. This is where we can have a bit of fun. We can make a specific design choice to draw your eye to a corner or a side of the quilt. So line up your strips until you get the effect that you want. Personally, I love adding something to indicate the top or the bottom so that the recipient has a quick guide to know which way is up. If this block looks familiar, it's from my fast and easy jelly roll blocks, which were made with leftover jelly roll strips. So I don't actually have any leftover scraps for this quilt. So I'm going to my Mount Scrap More and digging some out. Then sew them together, either with a straight seam or a 45, your choice, but just be consistent. Lay it out on your quilt, to see where it looks best and keep the bulk out of those corners. In this method, I also made the design choice to sew my binding to the top of my quilt. Then with my walking foot and a dark brown thread, I stitched in the ditch so my bright bold binding could speak for itself. In this method, you are echoing a design within your quilt, aligning the joins in the binding with seams on the quilt top. You can use the same fabric as the quilt top or contrast it with another. To calculate how long your scrappy binding strips need to be, you need to measure between the seams and add half an inch for the seam allowance. And remember to measure what you actually have and not what you should have. I've made that mistake. The joins in this method are straight. This might be a little tricky the first time you try it, and you might find some of your joins don't line up with the seams as accurate as you want them to be. Part of this is that you're working with flat seams and you have nothing to lock into. But also, it's the seam alignment on the bottom of the binding that counts, not the top. And I find I like to realign my strips at the first join around a corner. That's way I get everything back on track. But honestly, they can be off a touch and from four steps away, no one will notice. Before I get to the last two methods, let me tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare can help make your 2022 a time of learning and growth. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn new skills. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests like photography, illustration, graphic design, and more. You know that I've enjoyed Skillshare membership for several years taking many classes on film production, calligraphy, and more. I especially like the classes by Samara Kaja, Stacey Bloomfield, and Elizabeth Owen. They are a great way to unwind, relax, and learn while doing your 30-minute sewing, making dinner, or doing the laundry. 
All classes are ad-free so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched each week so there's always something new to discover. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. After we finish our quilt top, we square up our quilts and produce all these long scrap strips from the tops and sides of our quilt sandwich. These are perfect to be cut into binding strips for your next quilt. Sew them into one long strip and you can make a note of how long they are if you want. So for your next project, you can just grab and go. I can't tell you how many times this has made my life easier. I keep them in this bucket and I always consider them first before I cut new binding. And when the strips become too short for binding, I turn them into one of my jelly roll blocks or my scrappy sampler blocks. If you need to watch my Binding the Basics video, I'm gonna leave a link right here. And if you need other ideas of what to do with your scrap pieces, I'll leave a link to my scrappy playlist right here as well. Take care and I'll see you next time.